I would like to share this uh, knowledge and uh, insight from Martin Luther King and also from the Buddha uh, who share that universal principles of leadership. Okay, so uh, if you can uh, see my slide come up, uh, whether on Facebook or Zoom, uh, please type number one. Please type number one. Yeah, on Facebook, on Zoom right now. Yeah, if you see my slide come up. Yeah, this is the 17th time. Okay, great. Did a 17th time that we keep continue this uh, monthly full moon bath that we take this uh, blessing from the full moon, which is a symbol of completion. Yeah. And uh, together with like a daily my shower program, it start amid COVID-19, the crisis that daily my shower start in April. And then the following month for Mumbai start. So since uh, May 2020, uh, 2020. Yeah. And this term, yeah, we would like to touch on the leadership theme. Yeah, that uh, January 17, today in America is a Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Yeah, it's a national holiday that uh, American people and anyone who know Martin Luther King or rather will celebrate his great leadership. Yeah, it's um, here in America, they celebrate uh, the third Monday yeah, of each January. Yeah, so each year is a uh, different than this year is Monday, January 17. Yeah, which is also uh, kind of interesting. This is a 17th time of uh, full moon bath. And as the uh, Shanya, our moderator mentioned that he is, he was an American uh, Baptist minister. Yeah, he practiced Christianity and activists. Yeah, he became the most visible spokesperson and leaders in American civil rights movement from 1955 until his assassination in 1968. Yeah, so sad to that happened. King advanced civil rights through nonviolence and civil disobedience inspired by his Christian belief and a nonviolent activism of Mahatma Gandhi. He had so many great message as a leader. Yeah, we'll take a look at some of them that uh, we can be inspired really to follow his message. He said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But by all means, keep moving. Yeah, that is a very wonderful fighting spirit. And we need that so much right now with COVID-19 challenge, with climate crisis, with data privacy crisis, many crises right now. We cannot give up, keep moving. Yeah, no matter how challenging it is. And this is also another wonderful one. We must learn to live together as brothers, or we will perish together as fools. That's the only way forward. That <laughs> We must find a way as brothers, live together, no matter what religion, no matter what belief system. Come together as brother. If not, we would die as a fool. And the most monumental moment in his life is August 29, 1963, when he gave the historical speech, I have a dream. Yeah. 
sorry. Less than a year after that, so that day, hundred thousand or more, two hundred thousand. This is like a, so many people show up to support that ideas of equality, that no more discrimination toward African American, and that's the bit of civil rights movement that spread all over the world. Less than a year after that day. July 2nd, 1964. President of United States of America signed a Civil Rights Act. Yeah, a Civil Rights Act that prohibit racial discrimination in employment and education and outlaw racial segregation in public places such as school, buses, park, and swimming pools. Yeah, this is like a momentous event that now we are uh, try our best as humanity to respect each other. Yeah. However, however, yeah, they guess, you know, so many years past more than, um, roughly 50 years, uh, 70 years since those days, those inequality challenge is not completely solved. It's better comparing to those days I saw some uh, documentary. It's, it's very bad <laughs> that the they, they discrimination on the African-American that really is separate. It's like a caste system in the old times in India. They don't touch each other belongings and they're not allowed to walk in, in the area. This thing happened, yeah, during the time of COVID that George Floyd, yeah, the guy he, that he was dead on the knees of the police in America. And there's a Black Lives Matter campaign explode in America and around the world. I'm sure that if Martin Luther King still alive, he will guide everyone, no violence, just peaceful protest. Yeah, which is not that um, so easy to manage around the world. But it show up, it's not over yet. We need more leadership like the way Martin Luther King did to make sure that Black Lives Matter, all lives matter. Yeah. This is three. This is three great qualities of Martin Luther King that uh, I would like to share with everyone. Yeah, hope you can see better. Okay. Uh, three things that was explained in his uh, bio that this is key quality we can learn, we can imitate from what uh, Martin Luther King showed us, three things. Number one, boldness. Yeah, if you want to be the great leader, you need to be bold. You need to have that brevity, like a how I can see the better humanity, even sometimes is scary to uh, fight over any power out there that do not want equality, do not want to see the better days of humanity. So boldness that's number one. Number two, culture. Yeah, it said that Martin Luther King know very well how to connect to each group, yeah of the people and he know what is the, the, the feeling of the society right there and he communicate very well. Yeah, culture, you know, what is the message behind those things that happening in the society? And the last one, empathy. He lead by example. He connect to each person. He walk the talk. 
he really connect with each one and it's his empathy that he's a caring leader, not just on the stage, but anywhere where, when he meet with the those protester. So that is three great quality. Bonus, be brave. Culture, understand the context, understand the situation well. Yeah, I think that's from learning, that from talking to different people. And the last one, empathy. Show your compassion, show your loving kindness and connect with the people. That's how the great leader make a move. Okay, so after learning from uh, Martin Luther King, I uh, would like to, uh, sorry, mute just a bit. Yeah, this is the word from the Buddha that we can reflect on the leadership. He said, irrigators regulate the river, right? In the agriculture, irrigators regulate the river, how to make the river flow. Yeah, to the farm. Fractures strengthen the arrow sharp, right? Fracture try to make the arrow sharp straight, and then it can uh, point out to the direction that they need. And then carpenters shape the wood. Carpenters shape the wood. Irrigator, regular deliver, Fletcher, strengthen, the arrow sharp, carpenters shape the wood. And the wise control themselves. Yeah, Buddha said the wise control themselves. That is the mark of the leader. The leader is in control of themselves. And when we see that, that they're in control, they say the right thing, they do the right action, they lead in the right direction. Yeah, take control. So today I share with you these three great quality that we learn from the Buddha is universal. Like the way Martin Luther King show us bonus, culture, and empathy. Yeah, this is universal uh, value Buddha show us that he has great purity. He's enlightened. And then it comes the great wisdom. Yeah, after enlightenment, it come up with a great wisdom. And then he has great compassion that he care other people. You know, similar to the way Jesus Christ he dedicated his life to help other people with the love of God, with the love of humanity. Buddha himself, he purified his mind, be enlightened and, and share his compassionate leadership yeah, to help other people. And today, how we're gonna learn from that, how we're gonna uh, imitate that great quality as a great leader. So I share this with you. Three good quality of good leaders. Number one, good meditation. That's what we're going to do together. Purify the mind. I remember uh, uh, several years ago when I met with Archbishop Lakta Mayo and we discussed meditation. And Archbishop said, oh, in my Jesuit training, yeah, we, we practice this, is communication with the Lord. <laughs> like a be calm and then listen to the Lord and guide. And I said, wow, that's exactly what Buddhist monk will do every morning too. Be calm and connect to the great essence. Yeah, we call Buddha in different religion, have different terms, but that a great essence in the universe. So good meditation is a start of good leadership. And then good lifestyle. Yeah, when you have a great wisdom, when you have wisdom, you know what to say, what to do in each situation. That's a good lifestyle. And the last one, good contribution. That you can contribute to help other people. And yeah, that is 
good contribution. This is leadership from the Buddha, which is universal. Anyone can benefit from it. Meditation, lifestyle, and contribution.